Hi, Frost Pluskin here from the Top Shelf Aquatics Farm. I'm here once again in our retail store at our fish system. And today I'm very excited to be continuing our series, What is a Fish? A series where we divide up the myriad of different organisms that we all collectively call fish into their own individual components and groupings so we can better appreciate them, where they come from, and of course, how to keep them alive, happy, and healthy in our reef aquariums. So today, we're gonna to be discussing a survivor, uh, a fish that is the last of its kind, the only living member of its family, the Zanklidae. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a benthopelagic fish that enjoys uh, existence in tropical oceans nearly worldwide, yet in the aquarium uh, has been historically considered one of the most challenging, finicky, and expert level fish to keep. So today, we'll be discussing the Moorish Idol, this beautiful specimen we see behind me, uh, some of the aspects of its biology, how those uh, biological aspects contribute to the difficulty associated with this fish's legend as a difficult and finicky fish to keep, and then some strategies that we as reef keepers and aquarists and aquaculturists of the future can use to learn from these uh, biological necessities so that we can learn to take advantage, keep Moorish idols alive, happy and healthy in our aquariums, perhaps even establish a lineage of uh, captive bred individuals for the aquarium industry to enjoy. So without further ado, the last of the living Zanklidae, the Moorish idols. This fish as you see behind me is defined uh, by its environment. This is a fish that has no problem traversing massive amounts of water at a time. They can travel miles and miles and miles to travel to different reefs, lagoons, estuaries, benthopelagic zones, so they can hunt a wide variety of forage, mainly including sessile organisms such as sponges, anemones, other finicky crustaceans and invertebrates. So basically what this fish does is it's designed to be moving across uh, traveling vast distances to other forage grounds, finding a good forage ground, and then as a school, eliminating all the sponges and other organisms that they see in that pasture before moving on. So they are adept at traversing not only over long distances very, relatively quickly, but their pennate shape allows them to navigate in between structures and other areas of the reef and really, really take advantage of all those different grazing sites, of all those different nooks and crannies where their delicious sponge prey may hide. So they also have two defining spines right before their eyes and a wonderful lateral line, which we see rides above uh, from the eye all the way curving towards the caudal fin. So a really wonderfully adept, specialized, majestic organism for mastering the pelagic and uh, reef structured environments alike. So let's see how some of that majesty obviously translates and why we love it and why it's so majestic and sought after, but it also translates into why this fish has been notoriously one, which historically many aquarists have considered best kept in the oceans. It's because for the widest time, throughout the 20th century, pretty much 99% of Moorish idols that were put into tanks did not do well. This is because several aspects of their biology were not being fully entertained. You cannot treat a Moorish idol in the same way that you treat a juvenile grouper, as we discussed in our Serenity video. This is an organism that needs large amounts of swimming space. You need a 100, 200, 300 gallon plus aquarium that not only has lots of horizontal swimming space, but maybe even vertical swimming space as well. These animals are used to going from shallow lagoons down reef slopes into depths almost exceeding 100 feet. So we need to be able to entertain all the dynamic swimming space that an organism needs. Its muscles are designed to constantly be moving, navigating. We need reefs, rock structure, complex structure for it to be constantly moving around. It will be stressed to death, literally, in an empty glass box. So accompanying this, as we'll discuss in our flow videos, we need moderate to high levels of flow to entertain the muscle and dynamic needs that this fish has to keep itself growing and entertain its natural behavior so that it'll feel comfortable grazing and grazing it does do. As we talked about, this fish is a specialized sponge and vertebrate feeder. So uh, it's very important that we don't consider this again like a grouper. A grouper can come in after being brought through the supply chain and starved for periods of time and put in holding chambers, and it'll relatively do well after getting a couple feeds. Its robust cardiac stomach will allow that grouper to break down a wide variety of forage and prey types and get that grouper happy and healthy in the aquarium on whatever diet you supply it. The same is not necessarily true to a more specialized feeder like the Moorish Idol. 
That Moorish idol was born in a wild ecological context. It was born within the context of a forage that enjoyed that particular type of sponge, coral, worm, etc. from the moment that it metamorphosed from a larvae all the way to the point that you got it. So uh, you need to be able to be very accommodating with these fish. They need to start off on a more specialized prey type. Don't put this fish in a, a new naive aquarium that doesn't have any growth. You need to put it into a well-seasoned aquarium that has a wide variety of sponges, corals, other things that it can graze on. This is another issue that people quickly found with the Moorish idols. They either didn't get them to eat at all and they quickly starved and stressed to death within a matter of days to weeks, or they ate too much and they destroyed everything in the tank, coral, invertebrates, anything they could get their, their little mouth around. So uh, we really need to entertain this fish for its grazing behavior. We have large water volumes of the tank space, dynamic space, and then we can use things such as silicon dosing, having a well-aged aquarium, even dosing things such as phytoplankton, especially diatoms that have silicon, and we can promote heavy amounts of sponge community so that this fish can be grazing in between the deliberate feedings that you will need to deliver to this fish. This fish will need to be eating multiple times throughout the day. Unlike the grouper, it does not have a relatively uh, short gastrointestinal tract. It is one that is constantly moving prey, prey items and forage through its body at all given times. It is designed to constantly be foraging, exhausting that site and moving on. Therefore, to keep it alive in a small contained box, we need to create that high level of forage reconciled through having all kinds of sponges and stuff growing that the thing can be eating in between feedings combined with great direct feedings and that include having things such as products that have sponges and wild seafood material that can accommodate to the very diverse nutritional needs of this organism. So lastly, we have these challenges, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. More and more people are slowly having success with Moorish idols and because of that, uh, there will always be a great demand because of the great lineage and hallmark and great charismatic qualities of this fish. Because of that constant demand and that slowly increasing rate of success in captivity, more and more aquaculture enterprises are getting very interested in housing the Moorish Idol, working with the Moorish Idol, developing better formulated feeds for the Moorish Idol, and more importantly, developing aquaculture techniques to breed Moorish idols that have never seen the wild, that will be more accommodating to feeds that they'll be exposed to later in life in the aquarium, and Moorish idols that don't depend on the wild stocks whatsoever. The Moorish idol is the last of its kind, yet it enjoys huge worldwide distribution in all the world's oceans. This is because it gives birth to very, very tiny larvae that stay larvae for long periods of time. This allows the Moorish idol to give birth to eggs that may become adults, uh, that are laid in Easter Island and they may uh, become adults in Tahiti or Hawaii or, or somewhere else towards Africa or Peru. Uh, because of that, we have to entertain a very long larval life cycle and this will be a very difficult fish to bring economically into the aquarium industry. That being said, it's also a fish that represents a lot of the challenges that the old reef aquarium hobby faced and many of the challenges the reef aquarium hobby is overcoming and superseding in a new sustainable dawn because we are recognizing that not all fish are created equal. Some fish have very specialized needs. And if we want to keep those fish happy, healthy, and beautiful, we have to rise to the challenge. The Zanklady, the survivor, the Moorish Idol. Thank you, we'll see you next time.